not, I'm not fucking reading The Goldfinch. Hey nerds, it's Michaela back again with another video. This is the third time that I am recording this intro. The first two times I tried, uh, those, those attempts happened in my car. I wanted to record my intro in my car and then record a little bit inside my library. This is the library hall, by the way, and then come back here and finish the video. Um, but unfortunately, despite having a brand new car that is very lovely, um, and that, you know, runs like a dream, very smooth, my camera still shook like a motherfucker. So that entire intro has to be scrapped, and so I'm starting over. So hello. Hi. This video is a library haul. As I said, I have a brand new car. Um, you might have seen a video that I did a couple months ago that I recorded in my old car. That was a nightmare. Um, that car was a danger to society, to myself, to the world, really. Um, so I needed a new one and I have a new one. And as a result, um, I don't have a ton of expendable, disposable cash at the moment. So I am making use of my library uh, far more than I have in the past. So. I did take a little trip to one of the branches of my city's library system today. I did not go to the branch that's actually closest to me. I went to the branch um, that's closest to my parents because that's sort of like my home branch. It's the branch that I uh, have gone to the most. It's the branch that I spent a lot of time in when I was in grad school. I Yeah, it's, it's sort of like my library. I know I eventually do need to go to the branch that is now closest to me, um, but I was just not in the mood today. <laughs> but when I went in, I knew I wanted to look at the nonfiction section. Um, I have recently read a, a number of nonfiction books that I checked out from my library and I really like them. I knew I wanted some YA fiction, which was actually very disappointing. Um, the YA fiction in this branch of the library was terrible. First of all, all of the shelves were like extremely low. I'm gonna put in a clip actually right now of what the shelves in the Y section looked like. As you can see, very short and like not that many. They kind of combined middle grain and YA fiction and like I understand why they did that but it was very hard to parse through like what was YA for like 16, 17, 18 year olds and what was YA for like 12 year olds. It was very, very hard. And then I just like sort of, sort of generally perused. I was just walking around. It was very nice to be out. I mean, of course it was a library, so it was not crowded. Staying six feet away from someone was not a problem. There was like, I think 10 of us in the entire building. It was great. Um, it was nice to just, to just be out and to be wandering around. So I am just going to do a little haul for you now. I'm going to just talk about what I picked up and why I picked it up. And then of course you'll be seeing these in the future as I, as I talk about them. So I have here my tote bag of all of the books that I'm going to be pulling from. This is a tote, I believe I got it at Fest. It says I'd rather be reading. It's from Epic Reads. One thing you will know if you've ever been to Yelfest, or probably I'm going to guess like any book convention is that you'll walk away with so many motherfucking tote bags. You will be drowning in tote bags. I literally donated like at, like half of my tote bag collection to Goodwill because I was like, I don't need these ever. I don't even know how many books I got in total. The receipt, I left the receipt by the door that has a number. So we're gonna find out together. I'm gonna guess like eight or so. Uh, I will start with the last one because the first one's on the bottom of the bag and the last one that I picked on the top. And the last one I picked, <laughs> I was actually looking for a different book. I thought I was finally going to read the Se A Secret History or The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I thought like, oh, maybe I'll finally get it. So I went over to that section um, and they did not have it. They had The Goldfinch, but I was like, I'm not, I'm not fucking reading The Goldfinch. I, I didn't even really want to read A Secret History, but I thought I'd give it a shot. I'm not going to catch you reading The Goldfinch. A, a series caught my eye that seems like extremely me. And so I picked up the first book and if I like it, I'm absolutely going back for others. This book is An Irish Country Doctor by Patrick Taylor. And like from what it seems, I, I, I skimmed the back, but A, the cover is lovely and B, it seems like a series about an Irish country doctor in the, I don't know what century. Apparently it takes place like in the 1960s. I'm not entirely sure, but it seems like it's maybe got like, so it's like cottage core dream, just like the Irish countryside and the doctor and like the people that he interacts with. I actually don't know a lot of the details, um, but it looks very cute. There's like, I think five or six of these books. And so I, it was like literally the last thing I picked up like right before I left and I just uh, decided to give it a whirl. So I don't know, it looks cute. This next book was on my library's um, sort of display for Black History Month. This is a book that um, has been on my to read list for like a million years and I'm finally glad. Like it, I just like saw it out of the corner of my eye cause I actually hadn't passed by where this table was. And I saw it and I was 
like a moth to a flame. I was like, finally, I'm going to pick this up. And the book is why I'm no longer talking to white people about race by, I believe it's pronounced ready, Edo Lodge. This is a book that I've heard truly excellent things about from what I recall. Um, the author is British. So she's bringing in a perspective that I think doesn't get a lot of airtime or like a lot of conversation time in the US. I feel like we talk a lot about what racism looks like and feels like in the US and like obviously that is important but other countries have also felt the long-term generational effects of racism and slavery and institution institutionalized bullshit um, and so I hear that this is just really fantastic and I'm excited to read it. So I believe the next couple of books are going to have come from the YA section. This is one that caught my eye and then when I like picked it up and saw what it was I'm like hell yes. This is of a genre of book that I don't exactly even know what I would call it. Um, I guess like historical poetry. Uh, the book is The Watch That Ends the Night by Alan Wolf, and it is a book written in poetry and each poem is like in the point of view of a different person aboard the Titanic on the night it sank. I believe it's the night or possibly sometime before. I don't exactly know. But I love this shit. I read either la not last year, I believe it was in 2019, White Rose by Kip Wilson and The Voices of Joan of Arc. Do you not remember the author? It is literally on the shelf. Am I going to get up to it. look absolutely not i'll put it on screen um but those are two books that are told in poetry form and like tell a a, a historical story in poetry form um so it's a historical or fiction written in poetry i don't know why i could not find those words to say it historical fiction written in poetry um I, I mean these are based off of real people from what i gather um people who are actually aboard the ship and it's you know poems about their night. Um, so I'm extremely excited to read this. It's a thick boy, um, but I think it's gonna be great. This next book, um, again, just like caught my eye. And the reason I actually ended up taking it with me was because it sounds extremely similar to a book I have read very recently. So the book is Anna and the Swallow Man by Gavriel Savit. Maybe? Sorry. So this is the first like paragraph of the inner flap description. It says Krakow 1939, a million marching soldiers and a thousand barking dogs. There is, n this is no place to grow up. Anna Lania is just seven years old when the Germans take her father, a linguistics professor, during their, their purge of intellectuals in Poland. She's alone. And like this sounds so similar to um, Between Shades of Grey by Rita Sepetis, which I have read and talked about on this channel before. So I, I was like kind of stunned by that. And I was like, oh, I want to see it. And I want to like maybe compare it and see how they're similar or different. In, in Between Shades of Grey, Anna and her mother and her brother are taken and her father is taken like they're separated uh, this one it seems like just her father is taken but i think that's very interesting so i picked it up mostly to do this like kind of comparison see what they're like this next one i picked up because uh the cover looks super interesting and i read the inner flap and i did not understand what i was reading so i do not know what this book is about but a the front cover still looks very interesting and b i don't think it's a part of a series so i felt like pretty confident that I'll, like, I'll just figure it out. It's called Bone Gap and it's by Laura Ruby. I don't know anything about this. I love the cover. I love, it's a bee. Every, the, they have the plastic thing so it's reflecting, but like it's a bee. Um, and I think it's about a kidnapping or possibly a series of kidnappings. I don't know. I don't know. I literally don't, I don't know anything. It's about this place called Bone Gap and people are going missing. It seems interesting and I liked the cover. I'm a simple girl, what can I say? All right, it looks like I have three more and they are all going to be nonfiction. So this first one is Malinke, Pocahontas, and Sacagawea, Indian Women as Cultural Intermediaries and National Symbols by Rebecca K. Yeager. Yeager? Jager? I'm not entirely sure. Um, this just seems like a very interesting exploration of the role that specifically female um, Native Indigenous women have played in our history, in our culture. I, you know, sort of flipped through and it seemed to just, like I said, be a, a conversation about the way that we think about Native women and why we think that way. I'm hoping we have some like history in here to explain like who these women really were and then how we white people crafted a story about who they were and maybe how that's the real history and the story are alike. And I just like, I don't know, I grabbed it and literally just spotted it. I was like, this looks good and I grabbed it. Oh, 
I don't even know where this one came from. Okay, this one's also YA. This is Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen M. McManus. I read One of Us is Lying last year, maybe. I don't remember. I liked it. I didn't think I was going to like it, and I did. So I can't remember if this is actually like a second in the series or if she just like named it after, like used the naming convention. I don't know. I am not going to reread the first one before... I read this but I mean listen I liked the first one it really surprised me so I'm expecting this one to hold up as well I love a good mystery so and then finally I actually just started my uh, jaunt through my library in the bibliography section um, just because that's kind of where I ended up and I found David Ortiz's biography um, if you do not know I am a big sports fan um, and specifically a big Boston sports fan. I'm more into football, although I completely checked out of all sports in 2020 and honestly, I don't regret it. <laughs> but also like when it comes to baseball, I root for the Red Sox and you know, Poppy is a, an absolute cultural icon. I was excited to see this. I love Big Poppy. I think anybody who is in any way tangentially connected to the city of Boston loves Big Poppy. And yeah, I don't know. I just thought it doesn't seem like that long and I'd love to read a fucking poppy memoir. Are you kidding me? 100%. So those are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I was right. Those are the eight books that I just picked up at my local library. Very quick turnaround time. I have less than a month to read all these. I was very surprised by that. My due date for these is like before my due date for the last ones. Make that make sense. So I guess I'll be working through these very quickly. You will, of course, hear about them in my monthly wrap-ups. And if any of them are particularly good enough to get their own review, you will certainly see that as well. Let me know if you have read any of these and recommend that I, you know, start with them because I don't actually know which ones I'm going to start with. I'm kind of just going to pick one and wing it. <laughs> Honestly, I'm thinking it might start with the fucking Irish Doctor one. I don't know. But, like, it could be the Irish Doctor one. That is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye!